talking about how ENS, this is the Ethereum name service, is taking Ethereum to the rest of the internet. Okay, so the, our name obviously is the Ethereum name service. And I want to explain what this means because this is going to, I think, explain a lot. Um, so how is it a name service? Uh, naming services are, are things that people don't think about very much. You know, it's, it's, it's uh, kind of something in the background. And um, uh, a lot of people actually misunderstand how they work. So naming services, uh, a naming service is just a lookup system. That's it. It doesn't do anything else, okay? You provide a name, it provides you with information. That's it. People overcomplicate this. Okay, your computer might then do something with that information, but that is separate from the naming service. Uh, so for example, with ENS, a lot of people think that if, if you're sending to an ENS address, that ENS like sends the transaction on to them for you or something like that. Nope, all ENS does is it tells the wallet which address to send to, and then the wallet sends the transaction. That all happens in the background, the user doesn't see that, but that's what's really happening. Uh, so why do we have naming services? Obviously computer identifiers, uh, what makes sense for computers, what makes sense for humans, uh, don't mix. Um, the internet already has a naming system, a domain name system. So even for blockchain things, why don't we just use DNS? Uh, a lot of people I, I, that I've talked to haven't even thought, haven't thought about this. Um, DNS could uh, provide naming for cryptocurrency addresses. It, it's a naming service. It can provide naming for anything. Um, so, so, so why don't we? Uh, well, it's because DNS launched in 1985. Uh, it's fairly insecure. Uh, it's fairly centralized. And so it kind of doesn't go along with the values of the blockchain world. Uh, but I just want to point out that DNS could do all these things for the blockchain world uh, if we wanted to use it for that. So ENS is a naming service, right? It has names, owners of names. It has records that can store any information. Uh, if you have a name, uh, you write and look it up. Um, you can do something with that information. But this is key. It can store any information. Um, it's not just for Ethereum. So why is it the Ethereum name service? It's not because it's a naming service only for the Ethereum ecosystem. It's because it's built <coughs> on Ethereum. This is common confusion. If you're thinking, hmm, if it's confusing, why don't you rebrand? Well, we're thinking about it. Uh, but right now, this is very important to understand. Uh, so just, it, it, it's called this, right, because the logic and records are stored on the Ethereum blockchain, but it can store information relevant to anything, right? So Ethereum is just like the infrastructure in the background that it happens to run on, but that doesn't restrict the types of information you could store on it, right? You could store phone numbers, you could store uh, your, your, your home, home address, you could store a Bitcoin address, you could store anything. It's a common misconception that it can't, right? And we have this right on our website. It's been there all along. Uh, so, um, why do we use Ethereum as our backend? Uh, it's a good question, right? There's other blockchains out there. Um, if, even if we wanted to have a blockchain naming, ser uh, a naming service built on a blockchain. Uh, here are some advantages. Ethereum has a very high security uh, built into it. Um, you know, if we were making our own chain or something like that, we'd have to bootstrap security. It would be low security. It'd be... Uh, um, uh, and it'd be probably less decentralized. Ethereum, we can build on Ethereum. It has high security and decentralized right out of the bat. Um, uh, we can be benefit from all the ecosystem infrastructure. It's like MetaMask and Fear. I mean, tons of services um, uh, that we benefit from right, right away. We don't have to reinvent those things. Uh, we benefit from standards. So all .eth names are actually ERC-721 uh, compliant. So, uh, you know, a dot ETH name is going to plug into um, NFT markets. That, that's a benefit that we have from, from, from being on Ethereum. Uh, programmability. So, you know, you can have things like conditioned ownership of name or something that's time locked for a certain period of time. And also interaction with other contracts on Ethereum. I mean, this is extremely powerful. Uh, the fact that ENS can do this. You know, if we were building on our, on our own chain or on a different chain, we wouldn't benefit uh, from the Ethereum ecosystem in this way. Uh, so, so we think this is why Ethereum is the best place to be building a blockchain-based naming system. So to kind of sum up, ENS uses Ethereum to serve the internet, including and beyond the Ethereum ecosystem. And as a result, um, ENS and their, uh, you know, our goal is to make ENS and therefore Ethereum a basic piece of internet infrastructure 
used widely by people whether they are part of the blockchain community or not. And the rest of this presentation is about how we are doing that. So of course, we do support the Ethereum ecosystem. I don't want to give the impression that we're moving beyond the Ethereum ecosystem. That's still a core thing that we do. That's, that's kind of our bread and butter. Um, but ENS does much more than that. Uh, and many people don't know uh, that ENS does much more than that. Uh, so I'm going to be talking about more in detail all the non-directly -Ethe Ethereum-related things that we support. OK, so IPFS, the Interplanetary File System. IPFS is a peer-to-peer -peer decentralized uh, file, uh, file system, file, file sharing protocol. ENS is a decentralized naming service. So together, uh, they are the decentralized web. Uh, we actually have a partnership with Protocol Labs, uh, building out infrastructure on this and, and promoting this kind of duo of protocols. Um, we already have native support for this uh, pair of protocols in, the, in Opera. And Brave says they are also working on adding this. So we are getting a native browser support. Um, but uh, if you're using a browser that doesn't have native support, uh, we benefit from, the, uh, from MetaMask. Uh, MetaMask uh, supports this. So if you are using Chrome, Firefox, Edge, Brave, or even the Tor browser, which I'll be talking about here in a second, uh, you automatically um, support uh, this decentralized web. And you can try it right now, actually. So we, we, we recommend. Uh, this is a great starting place, almonet.eth. Uh, you, you have to put a slash at the end if you're, if you're doing it in MetaMask, so it, it'll recognize, that, recognize it. If you type this in, uh, it'll, it'll load up. And this is a directory of, of websites, decentralized websites. So this is a great place to start. This works right now. Uh, we also have a project called ETHDNS, which is a bridge between uh, DNS and ENS plus IPFS. Um, there's uh, much more that can be said about this. We actually just published a blog post yesterday with more details, so go to our Medium, check it out. Uh, but for users, the bottom line is we've, we own eth.link on DNS. We've set up a special server there so that if there is a decentralized website and you don't have MetaMask or you're not using Opera, you can still access it. Just add .link to the end of it, and it will resolve like a normal website. So this is a great way if you, if you want to put your, your dApps front end on IPFS and make it accessible via ENS, but you still want normal people to be able, be able to access, uh, access it, uh, use this. Uh, so Tor.onion addresses. Um, so Tor.onion uh, websites have uh, been around for a while. They have a naming problem. Uh, they, they have the same, same naming problem that normal websites would have. Uh, that they have um, you know, an address to find the server. Uh, they need a naming system, but they don't trust DNS, because DNS is insecure, it's centralized, right, and Tor is all about security. Uh, so th right now, if you wanted to go to a .onion uh, website in the Tor browser, you have to go to something like this, right? This is very non-user friendly. Um, ENS uh, solves this problem. So ENS is obviously a decentralized, secure uh, naming solution that works today. Uh, and we've added support for .onion addresses in our, in our um, records. Uh, and you can use this in the Tor browser if you have MetaMask. So, so the Tor browser is Firefox-based. And if you add in the, uh, put in the add-on MetaMask, um, and you type in a .eth name that has a Tor.onion address in its records, it, it will resolve to that Tor.onion website. Uh, so this works today. You can try it right now. So we actually set up 10, 10 of these addresses uh, to kind of show off this functionality. So like duck.go.tor.eth, duck uh, facebook.tor.eth, and all these here. Um, and we actually set these up, and then we gave up control of them. So we can't change the addresses here. So this actually is showing off another functionality of ENS. This is to prevent phishing. Uh, you know, if I, if I set this up, I, I could set it up correctly, you could start using it, and then I could, if I really wanted to be bad, I could then change it to a different address, and then you might not know that I changed it, so you're going to, and I could, could go to a phishing website or something like that. I can't do that. So actually, nobody owns these, these addresses, uh, but they still work. That's something you can't do with DNS, by the way. Somebody always controls the DNS records. Uh, a WHOWIZ, we actually just launched this uh, with uh, text records. In our manager, 
Um, you can now, to put it to any ENS name, you can put like an email address, website, uh, a link to a, an avatar, a description, anything you want. Like if you're trying to sell a name or if you just want people to know who you are or, or however you want to use it, uh, this works right now. And uh, we're going to be adding the ability to put custom uh, text records very soon. This is what it looks like in our manager. Other cryptocurrencies. So you uh, heard, would have heard about this yesterday if you saw Nick Johnson, our lead developer's presentation. Um, but we just added multi-coin support on mainnet. It works right now, um, at least on the ENS protocol level. And uh, basically, it, it works the same way as with Ethereum addresses. You just store like the Bitcoin address or EOS address or something like that in the record. Um, and then the, the wallet, if someone types in the name, can grab that address and then the wallet sends the transaction, right? Some people are like, well, how does that work? Because you know, it's, it's on a different chain. Well, it's only, it's just where it's being stored. So, so for any cryptocurrency, any arbitrary cryptocurrency this works for. And um, we have a wallet that's actually uh, just about ready to launch this. Uh, they said that their beta version of this would be launching uh, either today or the next couple days. And then in a normal production, a mobile app by the end of the month. A Decent Wallet. This is a hardware and mobile uh, wallet uh, based out of uh, South Korea. This is their website, decentwallet.com. They support a, a bunch of different currencies. And uh, they, they were really great to kind of partner with us to kind of build this new functionality. And actually, I want to show a video of this. Ah, oh, darn it. OK, we're on a different computer. So we had a video of this working, a demo on mainnet. Uh, you can imagine how it works exactly the same way as Ethereum addresses, but with Bitcoin addresses in this video. Sorry, we had to switch computers. Um, okay. Uh, but we have commitments from more than just Decent Wallet. We actually have commitments from seven other wallets uh, to add this functionality either in the next couple of weeks or months. Uh, they are on board with this. Coinbase Wallet, Trust Wallet, IM Token, uh, Haven, My Crypto, Portis, and Opera. And we are also in discussions with other, other wallets. So we'd really like this to be the standard for all wallet naming. Um, and if you are uh, involved in another multi-coin wallet, uh, please let us know. We'd love to work with you on this. And uh, this new functionality was actually uh, funded by a grant from Binance X. So thank you to Binance X. We really appreciate the support. OK, we are also working on uh, DNS namespace integration. So this is, this is really important to understand. A, a lot of people think that ENS is .eth. It's not. Like, banish that idea from your name. Uh, banish the idea from your mind, OK? ENS is not .eth names. ENS is a naming system infrastructure. .eth is just one top-level domain that happens to work on it. But any name could run on the ENS infrastructure. This is completely separate things that you need to have separately in your mind. Um, so in this, this distinction also holds true for DNS. So there's like the DNS infrastructure, and then there's the DNS namespace, completely different. The namespace, namespace could remain the same even if the infrastructure changed. OK? And uh, so ENS could support, in principle, any name. And uh, this is exactly what we're trying to do. So, so we've actually devised a system so that if you own a name on DNS, only the owner of that name can claim use of that name on ENS. Not with .eth, but with the same top-level domain. So for example, ethereum.org, the, the EF could, if they, if they used our system, which is coming out here very soon, could have a DNS record and an ENS record for ethereum.org. Not ethereum.eth, ethereum.org. And uh, we, we use uh, something called DNSSEC to do this. I'm not going to explain this in detail, uh, but uh, it's a pretty clever system that, that Nick Johnson came up with here. And uh, we actually, this actually works right now for .xyz. So like Argent Wallet uses this. Uh, this .xyz was kind of our test case, and we're now confident in the system. We're going to be rolling this out uh, to all other DNSSEC-enabled DNS top-level domains, which is all the ones you've heard of. Uh, we also have some special use cases for these other top-level domains. Uh, dot .lux, dot .cred, dot .art. Oh yeah, so, so some people have said, well, if you're going to integrate the DNS namespace, why do we need .eth? Uh, well, because, because .eth is native to ENS, it has special properties. 
Um, so, so DNS names will still be subject to DNS controls because ownership goes only one direction. So whoever owns the DNS version of it uh, owns the ENS version of it. But because Dottie's names are native uh, to ENS, uh, they, have, they're, they have individual ownership and are not subject to those same controls. Some people ask about our relationship with ICANN. I'll just say a few words. Uh, it's friendly. Uh, we've gone to their, their conferences. We've given presentations. Uh, almost everybody is very open and receptive to ENS. In fact, people approach us and say, hey, we want to work together. Um, so we, we've, uh, we think there's a lot of potential to working together there. Also, this is a key thing to know. ICANN is not monolithic. Some people will say, this is what ICANN thinks or ICANN does. Um, ICANN is a lot of different people who think different things. And they don't always agree. So keep that in mind. All right, I'm going to skip this. Running low on time. Uh, new DNS RR type. We are working on getting a, uh, a new record type in the DNS system uh, for Ethereum addresses uh, so we can standardize our, the, 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 our process for claiming uh, DNS names on ENS. But this could be used beyond ENS. Just want you to be aware of that. And uh, we're also working on getting eth.arpa. Uh, .arpa domains are used for uh, basic internet infrastructure. And we are working on getting this uh, for use for the whole Ethereum community. Um, this would be another uh, kind of a semi-official link of, of Ethereum to the legacy internet. And then we're also working on uh, traditional DNS records. Uh, our, our public resolver actually supports this right now. Uh, but we have a project going with .cred. .cred is a DNS top-level domain. They have agreed to work with us to build a system to use ENS and IPFS to host all of their uh, DNS, traditional DNS records for their whole namespace, um, which would be an incredible kind of first step towards uh, having ENS uh, be used for that use case. So we are very excited about this. Uh, it's really, it's amazing they've agreed to do this with us. We've talked to lots of other top-level domains who are kind of interested, uh, but they tend to be very conservative. So they're willing to experiment with us on this, and we're very, we're very happy about that. So that's it. Uh, thank you very much. Here are some important links. And uh, we have one minute if anybody wants to ask a question. Yeah, so just, just run up to the mic here, and we have time for maybe one or two. I can also talk. We can also talk afterwards. We have uh, some of our, our developers here as well. What yes. happens if DNS want to add .eth names? Are they going to? I mean, in, in the DNS route? Yeah. It's currently reserved as a three-letter country code for Ethiopia, oh, okay. although they are not using any three-letter country codes. They're just like reserved in defense. Uh, and I, I've talked to people who say that they're actually probably not going to give them to the countries. So at some point, we might be able to get .eth as a GTLD, but that may or may not happen. Okay. Um, so it's probably unclear that ENS would ever be able to get the, the, the .eth TLD. Um, so the main issue is that for you to be uh, an ICANN approved TLD, you must abide by something called the, uh, what? The Uniform Domain Dispute Resolution Policy, or UDRP, which basically says things like, things like, like, like copyrights and, and trademarks are enforced. Um, and we're not, we're not really going for that. We technologically can't do that with .eth. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so I imagine that's probably just going to be like just a, a, a non-starter. Um, we, we, so currently, I'm kind of hoping the idea that you could have, you know, some some ICANN approved TLDs that that, uh, that 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 do enforce trademarks, and then some that don't. Um, but they have a very strict requirement that anything within their route uh, does enforce trademarks. Right. I mean, we'll see how that goes. Right. Yes. Last question uh, about the hardware wallet integration. Does the hardware wallet actually display the .eth name when you confirm? The what wallet integration? Uh, with hardware wallets that are using ENS. Oh, hardware. Uh, uh, yes. So like well, on the device, it displays. I, I don't know if it's on the device, good question, uh, but in their mobile app that uses their hardware wallet. Uh, okay, I was just going to ask because it's, it's very hard for hardware devices to authenticate ENS um, entries because they can't see the blockchain. So they don't know the current state of the ENS name. And because you can't do m multiple function calls inside of a single transaction, you can't just assert that the, the address is actually an ENS name. So I was curious how you solved that. Oh, uh, yeah, but. no, it's all on the mobile app. Okay. You would have seen that in the video. I'm sorry the video didn't work. Okay, thank you very much.